dot, I dot, R dot, E dot stands for financial independence, retire early. It's a growing financial movement, embraced particularly by young adults, keen to be in a position, as soon as possible, to choose whether and how much they wish to work, that is, to become financially independent. It generally requires a laser-like focus on saving as much as possible from current after-tax income, often in the order of 50 to 75 percent, and aggressively investing with a particular emphasis on generating sufficient passive income to replace the need for earned income. Devotees often share tips and advice via blogs, podcasts and message boards on ways to 1. Save more by either increasing income or reducing spending and 2. Invest consistent with potentially accelerating the achievement of financial independence. There are a number of dedicated influencer fire websites both in Australia such as Aussie Firebug and Aussie Fire Movement and internationally, for example, Mr Money Moustache and Playing With Fire. A common theme that underpins the movement is that time, rather than money, is your most valuable and finite resource. Adherents wish to minimise being locked into lifestyles where others, particularly employers, dictate how their precious time is used. Given that FinHealth provides a framework for assessing where you are on the road to your version of good financial health or financial independence, it could be expected that there would be a lot of overlap in the FIRE and FinHealth approaches to personal finance. The rest of this video examines the consistency of FinHealth's five key indicators of financial independence with our understanding of the predominant buyer view on each of the indicators. In summary, while there is some common ground, there are many significant divergences. Hi, I'm John Lesky, recently retired personal advisor and founder of FinHealth, a tool to guide you to your financial independence. The first FinHealth indicator, the investment wealth ratio, is a response to the question, is too much of your wealth allocated to lifestyle assets? For financial independence, it suggests that at least 55% of net worth should be held as investment wealth, that is, less than 45% held as lifestyle assets. As far as I'm aware, there is no similar benchmark that FIRE follows followers target. But there is a very strong focus on minimising lifestyle assets and maximising investment wealth to accelerate the achievement of financial independence. The Fin Health philosophy suggests that you aren't really financially independent if you need to sell lifestyle assets to fund your future spending. While you may choose, for example, to downsize your current residence in retirement, this would be driven by considerations other than funding your retirement. However, many FIRE adherents are so focused on building investment wealth quickly that they are willing to upend lifestyles and move from the city to the country or to another state to obtain cheaper housing. A fairly extreme US example illustrates the lifestyle sacrifices an Arizona couple made. FinHealth doesn't share such a Spartan approach to achieving financial independence. The second FinHealth indicator of financial independence, the retirement expenditure multiple, examines the question, will you run out of money? In summary, it advocates that to finance 30 years of financial independence, retirement, you should aim to accumulate investment wealth of at least 25 years of expected annual spending. So, if you wish to finance a $100,000 a year retirement lifestyle, you should be aiming to accumulate at least $2.5 million in investment wealth. This is often called the rule of 25 or the 4% rule. 
Most fire influencers that I'm familiar with seem to also use this benchmark. But it's the application of the Rule of 25 that concerns me. First, for say, a 35-year-old fire couple looking to achieve financial independence in 10 years at age 45, the financial spending estimate used to multiply by 25 is usually heavily based on what they're spending now. My over 20-year experience as a financial planner showed me that spending changes over time with lifestyle events, quite separate from any conscious decisions to change the ongoing quality of life. In particular, the costs associated with any children always increased with age until the children finally became financially independent of their parents. To help younger clients make better estimates of their financial independence slash retirement spending, we would have them paint mental pictures of their desired lifestyles in 10-year intervals. We would then apply reasonable cost to those envisaged lifestyles. The 10 years preceding the desired retirement date would serve as a jumping off point to make an initial estimate of desired annual retirement spending. If, for example, the client was aged 35 now, the resulting retirement spending estimate in, say, 25 to 30 years was usually considerably more than what they were currently currently spending, adjusted for inflation. There are some pretty basic investment wealth calculators on the influencer sites that use the Rule of 25 to calculate an investment wealth requirement for financial independence based only on current spending. For fire adherents, these current spending estimates are usually already cut to the bone, leaving little room to manoeuvre if ongoing lifestyle expenses rise over time. FinHealth's personal finance software provides for a far more nuanced consideration of both projected income and spending to calculate whether your projected retirement investment wealth is likely to be sufficient to fund your best estimate of financial independence and or retirement spending. A second potentially serious problem with the use of the Rule of 25 by fire adherents is that it's based on funding 30 years of retirement spending. Retirements from work at age 35 to 45 may, for example, indicate the need for investment wealth to be able to fund 50 to 60 years of spending. Retirement expenditure multiples of 30 to 40 may be more reasonable, substantially increasing the investment wealth requirement for financial independence. At least in the USA, all citizens have access to Social Security, allaying this concern somewhat for frugal fire followers. In Australia, the investment wealth requirement for financial independence may preclude many from access to the age pension. Next, the third bin health indicator of financial independence is the tax effectiveness ratio. It's your superannuation balances divided by your projected lifetime investment wealth. The indicator is a proxy measure to help answer the question, are your investments held tax effectively? It suggests that for most Australians, the most tax effective vehicle for holding investment wealth is the superannuation environment. Provided you're over 60 and have retired, a couple can hold up to a total of $3.4 million without paying any tax on earnings in the pension drawdown phase of superannuation. There are also significant tax benefits in the accumulation phase. FinHealth suggests that a financial independence benchmark for this ratio is that at least 75% of investment wealth is held in superannuation. But for a now 30-year-old fire couple who wish to retire in 15 years at age 45, in normal circumstances, 
they would be unable to access the superannuation to live off until age 60. They would therefore need to bridge the gap between age 45 and 60 with funds invested outside superannuation. The earnings and capital gains on these funds would be subject to taxation generally at higher rates than apply to the accumulation phase of superannuation. Also, the scope to maximise tax-deductible contributions to superannuation may be reduced due to the need to build investment wealth outside super. As a result, the quest for early retirement may come at the expense of considerable taxation drag on investment wealth accumulation. Not particularly efficient wealth management, but a price most seeking early retirement are probably prepared to pay. The fourth bin health indicator of financial independence is the growth asset allocation ratio. Examining the question, how much investment risk are you comfortable with? It encourages you to decide on your target growth asset allocation ratio, which is the maximum growth asset risk you're comfortable holding when financially independent and or retired. By definition, the option of returning to work to earn income to salvage the significant drop in growth asset values isn't available. The maximum target growth asset allocation chosen by my most risk-tolerant financial planning clients, was 70% of investment wealth held as growth assets, and hence 30% as low-yielding defensive assets. Despite the heavy emphasis on investment risk management inherent in the FinHealth approach, fire adherents appear more driven by other factors, such as 1. Low cost, hence a fondness the low fee index and exchange traded funds. Two, generation of passive income to replace earned income, resulting in a desire for real estate and high dividend paying shares. And three, perceived opportunities for outsized, outsized returns to accelerate the achievement of financial independence. Hence, the suggestion by a number of influencers that you should consider a small allocation to cryptocurrencies in your portfolio. There doesn't appear to be much attention paid to coping with downside investment risk, low yielding defensive assets to reduce portfolio volatility and protect investment wealth in major downturns doesn't sit well with FIRE devotees looking to achieve financial independence as quickly as possible. Yet, a 40-year-old FIRE adherent who wants to retire at age 45, that is, in five years, isn't financially dissimilar to a 60-year-old wanting to retire at age 65. The majority of their saving for wealth accumulation is likely behind them, and they can't rely on long investment horizons and future savings to recover from a major downturn in growth asset markets. While the 40-year-old fire adherent may say they would continue to work beyond age 45 in this situation, in Finn Health's view, that response indicates they don't have a serious, robust plan for financial independence. The fifth and final Finn Health indicator of financial independence is the investment diversification ratio, looking at have you too many investment eggs in one basket. Our view is that to reduce investment risk, you should spread your investment wealth holdings as broadly as cost-effectively possible. The financial independence benchmark is set at a minimum of 75% of investment wealth to be held in highly diversified assets, and the higher the percentage, the better. Also, As we have discussed previously, it's your total investment returns after tax and after inflation for risk taken that you should care about. Total investment returns are the sum of both income and growth after tax 
and after inflation. And it's these returns that determine the real purchasing power of your investment portfolio. However, the fire emphasis on generating passive income to replace earned income leads to unnecessarily restricting the investment universe and reduce diversification. Unwittingly, the FIRE approach results in taking more investment risk than necessary to produce a desired expected return. The quest for growth also seduces FIRE adherence into considering highly concentrated and speculative opportunities like cryptocurrencies that we don't even regard as investments. In summary, although we believe financial independence is, for most people, a goal worth pursuing, it shouldn't come at the expense of drastically cutting desired lifestyle and the poor or inefficient investment practices that appear implicit in most of the fire material we looked at. If you're working simply to buy back your time, as many fire adherents advocate, we'd suggest you should find alternative employment that provides more satisfaction and an income stream for longer. While the idea of being able to retire at age 35 or even age 45 may sound appealing to a 30-year-old, my personal and client experience is that it's very difficult to know what will give you life satisfaction in 10 to 15 years' time. Knowing what you don't want now is easy, but a rush to escape from the current reality may cause you to jump from the frying pan into the fire. A little more balanced approach to achieving financial independence that allows you to enjoy life more today while figuring out what you want your future to look like may be the way to go. Hopefully, you found this video of interest. I'd like to know what you think. Please provide any comments or questions below. Finally, thanks for watching.